Good afternoon, Zachariah Jackson, Bastard News. I'm here with Ted. Ted, how do you pronounce your last name? Uh, Glick. 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 Yep. Ted Glick. And the interesting thing about Ted is that he's doing a hunger strike for 30 days? Uh, 32 days. 32, 32 days. 32 days. Okay, and let's talk about this hunger strike. Uh, what was it that, what's motivating you to do this here? Uh, the, the, the motivation is getting Trump out of office. That's the motivation. Getting Trump out of office. I, I actually had this idea back over the uh, Christmas holidays, literally like nine, ten months ago. Okay. Uh, I, ever since Trump was elected, now almost four years ago, I've been very involved in the resistance to everything that he stands for. Um, I supported Bernie Sanders in the primary. Okay. He didn't win. Biden mm -hmm. won. Yes. And even though Biden uh, is not like Sanders, he certainly is not as strong on issues the way Sanders is sure. from my perspective. There's just no question but that when you put the two up against each other, that uh, there's only one person who's going to be president after the election, sure. Biden or Trump. That's right. So um, what I felt uh, was necessary uh, and what I felt I could do through this fast was to just underline how important it is that people get out and vote uh, in this election and also that people who understand the threat that Trump and all his supporters represent uh, be involved in the work to mobilize the vote, especially in the battleground states, so that the electoral college vote goes the right way. If you remember, um, in the 2016 election, Hillary Clinton actually won the popular vote. Sure, but sure. But because of our backwards 18th century, um, you know, electoral vote. college okay. system, she did not win the presidency. So there's a real need strategically, and there has been a real need, and fortunately many people, many groups have stepped up and have been doing this, to really focus on those battleground states to be sure that that Biden gets the votes in that electoral college that he needs to win. Well, okay. And with the support that President Trump has, uh, at this point in challenge, we're only five days away, five to six days away. I, you know, I want Biden to win. But I don't know. I'm, what, I'm, what I'm hearing mm -hmm. from people that I would thought that would vote for Biden mm -hmm. is vote for Trump. And then they got the sneaky vote. Mm -hmm. They got this thing called the sneaky vote. You don't know what I'm doing in the ballot. So I don't know how to call this thing. Well, you know, I, I think um, if we were talking a week ago, uh, I might not have been so hopeful uh, about Biden winning, e even though uh, the polls very consistently, really, for months, have shown Biden ahead on a national level okay. by between 7% and 10% on average, when you average the polls. You can't just take one poll, you need to do the average. Sure, that gets sure. you much more accurate. So that's, that's been a very steady thing. He's, he's never gone, I believe, below 6% above Trump over that whole what, five month period. Okay. So, and that's still true. In fact, I saw just today that um, it, in one, actually a CNN poll, they actually now have him ahead of Trump by 12 percentage points okay. nationally, and that's like up two points to CNN. So, um, so I do think the fact that there's been this steady lead, that this, there's something baked in, right? Now, you know, you're saying there could be some people who, you know, the sneaky vote. Yeah, that's they're talking. That's, that's the know, talk. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I'm sure there's always some people, but I think uh, it's probably insignificant because um, people know about Trump sure. uh, now in a way uh, that uh, people didn't know so much back then. I think that, that, that could help, you know, uh, uh, impact that. 
But the other thing that's really key right now is the the turnout, the voter turnout that's happening. I mean, sure, it's, it's, sure. it's like an uprising. Mm -hmm. It's like an uprising at the polls. That's what's happening. As as of this morning, there were more people who have voted either by mail or by early voting. Okay, I've been um, that, that it, more than 50% of the total vote in 2016 has already voted mm -hmm. now. Okay. And there's still three more work days and then maybe Saturday. Sure, sure. For, for, for more of that. I mean, it, it's the way, the way the vote is going, I've been following this, this early voting. There could be over 100 million people who have voted by this weekend. Oh, man, it would be and, wonderful. Um, if we vote in terms of Biden, that would and, even be greater. And, and, and the, 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 um, the, the people who know how to do this thing have, have figured out that in many of the states, I think the, the figure is that in 16 of the 19 states where there's public, in, the, 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 the information is given out sure. about um, who it, where those, those votes are coming from, whether okay. they're Democrats, Republicans, or Independents. In those, in those 19 states, 16 of the 19 states have the Democrats ahead um, sure. in terms of the number of people voting. So that, that's a good sign. You, you ha in Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania, the figures are that uh, there are three, more than three times as many votes for the Democrats. That's uh, wonderful. As, I'm, I'm happy to as, hear it. As the Republicans, more than three times as many. Uh, over a million cast, I think it's like 71 percent are Democratic voters and 21 percent are Republicans. So you know, there's a whole, you know, the bank, they call it banking. A lot of votes uh, are being banked, which. Uh, definitely, in a, in a majority of cases, um, are Democratic votes. So that's a very good sign. And, and just in general, sure, sure. In general, in elections, this is the key for Democrats winning is voter turnout. You know? Sure, sure, um, sure. You know, sometimes, like Obama, you know, wins. And motivation, because I, I, I'll right. say this way: in 2016, they had the um, Democratic convention in Pennsylvania, uh -huh. in Philly, Philadelphia, uh -huh. right. and I went. The motivation for Hillary Clinton was very low. Right. Even at the even outside of the the uh, convention. I understand why. Too. And everybody was talking about. I mean, I had some conversations. People was talking about they wanted Bernie. Right. This is at the Democratic convention, right. and Hillary was scheduled to speak that night. Right. And I said, wait a minute. You're supposed to turn your vote over towards Hillary. Right. You know, I mean, you know, you're supposed to. Well, that wasn't actually the voting day, but you were supposed to turn your support over to Hillary. And I, 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 I left there undecided that, you know, do these people know how politics work? Do they know yeah, how the party works? No, but they, they was not uh, right. dead set against, uh, with Hillary, right. like you would think they would be. You know, what, one of the, the main targets, frankly, of this fast, um, are people who voted for Bernie? Sure. Uh, maybe people voted for Elizabeth Warren. Yes. Maybe there's some people who are who are thinking or planning on voting for the Green Party candidate, Howie Hawkins. Um, my my, uh, I'm trying to say to those people especially, um, we got to get Trump out of there. Uh, Biden um, is not a Bernie or a Warren, um, but. Uh, we have to get Trump out of there, and and to his credit, Biden has done things since winning the nomination. Sure, sure. Where he actually has changed his positions, he's moved somewhat sure. um, towards where more where Bernie is. He's shown that he is trying to have a bigger tent, um, and that there's possibilities um, to get things to happen. Um, I mean, clearly there's there's possibilities for things under Biden that are just totally impossible under Trump. I and mean, again, we've seen that for four years. So in that that's a, a lot of who I've been appealing to. I've been pleased, actually, I've gotten a fair amount of uh, coverage okay. in various progressive media outlets over sure. the course of this past, of these 26 days. And uh, that, that's been a good thing, because I, I do pick up that people, uh, a lot of people have noticed this, have learned about it. And I am hearing from people who, who appreciate what, what's happening um, and who have told me that because of what I'm doing, I am I am taking more action. I am signing up to do phone calling, okay. battlegrounds, okay. things like that. Okay. So, um, 
But yeah, the bottom line though is four more years with Trump. Um, you know, the way I thought about this, um, you know, it, it's it's not been easy to do this. It it, it is an ordeal. It is a definite sure, ordeal sure, sure. To, to just drink water mm -hmm. uh, with salt, potassium, and vitamin C for for a month. It's not, it's not, very it's not, hard. It's yes. not easy. But the thing that motivates me is thinking about what it would be like to have to go through four more years of trust, not just on a personal level, what would happen to so many people in this country, what would happen to people all over the world. It, it, would, it would just be, just, just, it's really unthinkable. Um, and uh, so this, this is my way to give everything I can to get this guy out of office. All right. Ted, let me ask you this thing. Let's say Trump moves Tuesday. You know, most presidents, when they come out of office, whether they uh, come out after their term or they lose the election, they visit universities, they go around speaking to us and things like that. Is there anything in your heart that wonder, you know, would he be worse out of office? Because if he's in office, we can watch him. But if Trump is not in office, what is he going to do for the next four years? Yeah, well, I, will he be a troublemaker? Right. Will he be a rebel rouser? Yeah, no, I think he will be. But he'll also be a loser. Yes. You know, one of one of his big things is he he's, he's a winner, right? He, he's this great negotiator. He's the great deal maker. And if he loses, and especially if he loses big. He's going to be a loser. So, yeah, he's still going to do his thing to try to rile up his base. Yes, No yes. question about it. Uh, and we will just have to deal with that. But to, he, to have him in power, able to prevent good things from happening, and able to push bad things to yes. make them happen, uh, we, 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 uh, that having him out of power. And, and, and besides that, once he's no longer in the White House, some of these these legal issues that sure. he has um, can uh, can begin to be pursued. So he may end up tied up in court, and maybe hopefully, and he'll end up in prison. Yes, That's where he belongs for so <laughs> many things. So many things. Wow! Wow! I say lock him up. Lock That's him what up. I say. Maybe, lock maybe him that's up. the next march we need to yeah. <laughs> get some signs to lock him up. If they don't already have them, I don't know whether they have them, have them. <laughs> you have quite a few assigned. Ted, have anyone joined you in your march towards this uh, day, the 3rd of November? In the fast. In the fast, yes. You know, I have been part of long fasts in the past. I, I, my first long fast was in uh, 1971 when I was in a federal prison. Okay for resisting the Vietnam War. I was uh, very active in the whole draft resistance movement for the Vietnam War. Ended up spending about a year in prison. And uh, when I was in prison in Danbury, Connecticut, uh, Father Phil Berrigan, Catholic priest, uh, who was also in prison for resisting the, the war and the draft, he led a 34-day um, liquid fast where we drank juice and other liquids. Sure. Um, that was my first long fast, and I've done a number of them since then. Um, and I've always done them with a group of people. Okay. And that does make it easier. No question about it. Misery loves company. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I made a very conscious decision. I didn't want to reach out to recruit anybody else to do okay. this one with me. I, I, I want my, I've wanted my action, and I've seen some, some positive results from this. I've wanted it to be a way to get people to do more, to get Trump out of office. Yes. Not just by voting, but by getting other people to vote against Trump. That, that's been my, those have been the things, that's the reason I'm doing it. And I didn't think it would be helpful to that end um, to try to have it be more than me. I have heard from like um, a handful of people who have said, um, actually my, my minister, my minister told me uh, that she was going to fast for three days. Okay. Uh, the three days, right? Actually, this weekend, right? Right before, right before the election. The election yeah. I've heard from her. Countdown she, is coming. She, she's oh done God. that. Uh, I did hear from another person who I, I know from way back during the Vietnam anti-war days. Sure. She said she was going to fast. A former nun. 
Um, there might be a couple of others. So there's been a little bit of that, but I, I haven't encouraged it, and I definitely have not tried to get other people to do it. And your website, I, I took a look at your website. You actually sent me your actual um, web uh, uh, thing I went on it. Uh -huh. and, and just watching and seeing that you do have a lot of support. Uh, people are really... Uh, <laughs> and you look thinner than you are. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've lost that, about 30 pounds. Wow. About 30 wow. pounds. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I'm really, I've been really feeling the cold. Mm -hmm. You know, usually in the winter time, you sure. know, it's starting to get a little bit like winter. Sure. Usually in the winter time, my wife and I have this thing because there's about a 10, 10 degree difference sure. in our thermostat, mm -hmm. right? She, she, when she, when she feels really cold, I'm tending to feel this is just about right, okay? Sure. So we all have this constant back and forth about what, what should we put the thermostat on, right? And actually, we have a, a new electrical heating system, a, 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 a heat pump, uh, so that we don't use any fossil fuels. Okay. We, uh, our energy, our electricity is from uh, from um, from renewable energy. We're oh, signed okay. up for the program. Okay. So this electrically powered heat pump, you know, it's, it's like one and five of them. Well, things. I see that you're so really conservative in that, that so, area. Because your car is a, 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 a uh, electric, right. it's, Chevy was that, all, Chevy Volt? Chevy Volt is an all electric car. We, we, we try to like live what we believe, sure, right? Sure, sure, uh, sure. Walk our talk, so that's, yeah. that's part of it. But anyway, on the fast though, it's it's just the reverse. Because I like have zero fat on my body. Sure, I and see, I, I gotta and I, I frank, and I have less muscle on my body, in my arms and my legs. Because what happens on a fast like this, a water only fast, the body, in its wisdom, when it's not getting food, um, it first feeds on like toxins mm -hmm. and poisons and chemicals in your system. And if, if you don't have a very good diet, um, that's going to come out as headaches and maybe rashes or boils, things like that. It can be a very rough time, kind of like you know cold turkey from being cooked on a heroin. Sure, sure, right? sure. But you know, not as long, say maybe several days. Then after those are essentially eliminated, you know, and that, that's a good thing in terms of your body. Once those are eliminated, then it's the fat, then it feeds on the fat. And after that's gone, then it starts to feed on the muscle. And the body and its wisdom first feeds on the muscles in the extremities, okay. in the arms and the legs. So, you know, when I, when I take a shower, I kind of, you know, very, it's a very different feel when I run that soap awesome. over my arms and my legs <laughs> and basically every part of my body. So what that means is that uh, I feel that I, it has, it's not real cold, but definitely it's getting, it is getting colder. And I feel it in a way that I never have. I have to wear, I have to wear more layers and I have to put, our, put the heat up in whatever room I'm in uh, much more than I, I had to do in the past. So there are real physical effects, no question about it. And, I, and I've been weaker. I've been weak from the second day of this thing. That's been the primary symptom. Um, I've had to be really careful in um, how I move, mm -hmm. how I get up from sitting, get up from lying down, you know, really be sure I don't, I'm not lightheaded and sure. busy, things like that. So, you know, I've learned that over the, over the years of my other fasts. So I've been okay. I've had no real serious problems. On Tuesday night at eight o'clock, you come off. Uh, that's the last day of the fast. I, I have, I did make a decision, um, actually last evening, that um, this evening I, I'm transitioning from water to liquids. I am going to take uh, fruit and vegetable uh, liquids, juices and liquid soups, actually starting this evening. Okay. Uh, and the, the main reason I decided to do that was I was I was watching. Uh, you know, TV talking about the, 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 the really upsurge in terms of the voter turnout. Sure. And I started thinking, boy, I wish I could be making some calls about that, but I can't because I'm too weak. Sure. And that kind of got me going to coming to the decision that, mm -hmm. well, why don't I just start getting nourishment from fruit and vegetables. Sure, 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 sure. Mm -hmm. So I can then, you know, spend a lot of time every day doing this phone call to the battleground state. There's groups that are doing it, and I know which ones they are. So I, you know, I thought about it, and I, the more I thought about it, the more I thought that was the right thing to do. I mean, there are a lot of people, a lot of friends, certainly my wife, 
people who you know love me and uh, are, are, are close to me who have really been concerned about my health okay. and concerned about any uh, impacts that this might have you know longer term so you know I'm, I've been taking that into account I, I have you know had a blood test done I've seen a doctor and things have been okay although there are some changes going to the blood uh, the blood test that okay. are not real good but they're not serious <clears throat> anyway, I just I just made that decision on the last evening, thinking seriously about it. But that seemed to be the right thing to continue the fast before these last six days to get get me some nourishment, so I can really pitch in very directly in the phone calling to the battleground states in this last period of time. I I, I want to be on this thing until the very end. Until the very end. Until the very end. So that that that's that's a little change in the plan. How is this election going to affect that, the next um, Supreme Court judge? If Trump is out Tuesday night, now does that mean that she still have the chance to be confirmed? Oh, no, no, she, she's been confirmed. Oh, my she, God. She's in there. She's in. She's in there, yeah. This uh, maneuver by the Republicans is totally unprincipled and dishonest and, you know, et cetera. It's nothing like nothing like what they did has ever been done before. Confirming a confirming a Supreme Court judge like one week before the election. It's never happened like that. So she has the job. She has the job. So what what's gonna have to happen, this is certainly something I'll be supporting and involved with. Uh, moves have to be made um, to increase the number of Supreme Court judges. And and that really is legally and constitutionally that is not a big deal. I, I actually look, I looked this up when you know this issue was coming to the fore after she was nominated, and I read the Constitution. I read the part of the Constitution dealing with the Supreme Court, and what it says it says that Supreme Court justices um, uh, are essentially decided by a majority vote of both houses of Congress sure. and then the approval of the president. Okay. So that's what has to happen. If, if, the, if the Democrats take the Senate, which is a that looks like a realistic possibility for sure. my following. Okay. There's a number of, number of states. Yeah, I'm where, hearing that right there. So that, that could happen. Um, if that happens and the Democrats control that, the White House, the Senate, and the House, um, there is a, a basis to think that there could be legislation enacted to say add two more justices to the Supreme Court. Yeah, how many uh, have now? Six? There's, no, there's nine right now. There's nine now. So that would make 11. Okay. And, it, and you know, there, there's, to me, there's a real rationale for that because what the Republicans have done is to steal two justices that should not have been put onto the court. Sure. You know, the first one was when, when Obama was president. And like nine months before the election, Mitch McConnell says, oh, we can't we can't proceed with your nomination, Obama, uh, because it's an election year, right? Um, and so that that's the first one that, that should have been moved, that should have been acted upon. There sure. should have been a hearing and a vote and so on. And then the second one was this, you know, uh, you know Amy Coney uh, Barrett replacing uh, Ginsburg, which is a real travesty, right, um, in the way that it was done. Both of those, um, that, that those justices never should have been on. So, you know, getting to more, the, 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 the uh, Congress and the President enacting uh, uh, the, the law, the legislation to add two more, is to me very appropriate and very defense, very defensible politically. Sure, sure. Now I don't know what Biden uh, has in mind. He he said he's going to appoint this uh, special panel that's going to deliberate for six months on the whole issue of the judiciary and how to have a more fair judiciary and so on. Um, we'll see what comes of that. But I know I know that a lot of people are already and groups already are starting to make plans to really have a whole push on. I'm sure as, as soon as Biden is hopefully elected and hopefully the Democrats take the Senate to really to, to push them um, to move on, on the changing the, uh, the, the law. You know, Ted, what I'm hearing also is term limits. Mm -hmm. You know, should there be term limits, do you think? Because they're in there for life. How old is this young lady that's president? I mean, that's um, the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. Uh, she's 48. Oh, my God. She'd she be, be there. there 35, 40 yeah. years. Yeah. Or more than that. 
Yeah, that, that, that's, you know, I think something certainly to look at in terms of the Supreme Court. Is she Court. the youngest that they picked? Uh, yeah, I don't know if there's ever been a younger Supreme Court justice. I, I don't know that, but she mm -hmm. has to be one of the youngest. Mm -hmm. And if you look at her record, she has, she has very little real track record in terms of actual doing things in the courtroom. Okay. I don't know if she's ever prosecuted a case or defended a case. I mean, she's, just, she's been mainly a teacher. Um, I think she's been two, two years, she's been two years in a, in a, in a judgeship in, um, in wow. Indiana. So she has very little experience. Um, yeah, so, you know, there, there's a number of things, I guess, that can be looked at, but, you know, definitely the bottom line is that it just can't be accepted as kind of, this, especially this, theft of the Republican convention. This is kind of off a little bit, but should we change the game for uh, the president or for the elected officials in terms of, should a person be able to, should a person be allowed to not have ever been a district leader and just become president. Have that happened in our history? Uh, well, uh, Trump. Trump. Yeah, Trump is the first, yes. I, I mean, mean, but... Of course, she, he's a, allegedly a billionaire. He may, right. be, may be more like, maybe maybe he has a million or two if you take away all his debt. But sure. anyway, whatever he is, he's definitely been like this the big guy, you know. But, but I'm, what, 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 I guess the question I'm asking, uh, should a person be able to just run for office and, and be president without any experience and not even a district leader? Well, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I guess I'm open to uh, anybody who wants to trying to, you know, become president. I, I, I guess I don't, I don't feel that that is, is necessarily a bad thing. I mean, okay. it seems to me it's, uh, I, I think the, actually the bigger issue, this is my answer, I think the bigger issue is the way in which money, you know, big money, you know, the money of the super rich, sure. of the of the 1%, right? How much that has corrupted elections. Um, and th so that it, that, that's what makes it difficult um, for people who don't have much money um, to get into the political game sure, and sure. to really rise up, uh, because you need to make so many, you know, compromises um, to get campaign donations to your campaign. Um, and if we had uh, a different way of financing campaigns, you know, there, there are some states that are actually enacted um, uh, systems where there's, there's public, public support, public, sure. public funds provided to candidates. And, um, they definitely have shown that you, you get a better result as a, result, as a result of that. Definitely a lot less corruption. So we, we, we clearly need a look at uh, any number of changes really to our electoral system. To me, that's one of the biggest, the corrosive impact of, of, of money of the rich and the corporate elite over the electoral system. That can be transformed. That, I think, will open up many more possibilities for much more democratic and a much more sound, uh, you know, legislative Well, I'm in this interview with Trump or Ross Perot. <laughs> Trump, or would you rather Ross Perot in office than Trump? You think he would have well, done a better job? Well, you know, the similarity again is they're both, you know, they're both very much the you know, major corporate elite. Um, I don't know if I had, I don't know, I would want, I want to choose between Perot and Trump. I probably would choose Perot, having seen Trump, but he's, he's just, he's, 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 just, so, he's just so despicable, Trump is so despicable on every level. And then, you know, this pandemic, he, he, he literally comes up today and the White House puts out a statement saying that basically the pandemic is over. It's like insane. It's just, it's insane. And it's even more insane, so many millions of people continue to support this school after him saying these You love them to death. <laughs> it is you just really them. a sad commentary about uh, politics in the country right now. Okay, well, look at the camera and tell them what, because we're going to air this tonight, no more, no later than tomorrow. Well, well, How should they vote, uh, Ted? Uh, you should vote, I suppose. What you think is best, I would urge you to do what I did. I voted for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. 
I would urge you, in addition to voting, um, to talk to your friends, your family, your neighbors, anybody who you can reach, to urge them to vote. Uh, this, this really is, I, I really can't think of another election more, more important than this one in my life. Um, we didn't mention the whole issue of global warming, of climate change, sure. and climate disruption. We need a president who gets it on how shifting away from fossil fuels to clean sources of energy, sure. like the wind and the sun, mm -hmm. is both very important for the Earth and for preserving our climate, but it's also just a great economic development program in terms of job creation and uplifting communities that are in need of uplifting. And Biden has made it very clear um, that's going to be uh, a major part of what he's about. So to me, the, 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 the answer is clear uh, to go, go for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Okay. And your website, would you like to give me your website? Yes, if you want to find out more about me and the past, lots of information there. I've actually kept a daily journal every day. I've written about this, how I'm feeling, how I'm, how I'm seeing things. It's just my name, which is Ted Glick, G-L-I-C-K dot com. That's it, TedGlick.com. Okay. Bassa News, Zachariah Jackson, Bassa News. Good night. Thank you, Bassa. Yes, sir. Just kind of shake hands here in the pandemic style. <laughs> I appreciate your coming out to do that. I didn't realize it was going to